Selena, it's high time we talk about lies and deception. All right. Mm-hmm. I've had it with your lies. <laughs> I've had it with your deception. No, actually, the reason I proposed this content or this this topic, what, I don't know, a month ago, yeah. was we had somebody, and I'm just going to, just a little rant oh, here. Man. Okay. We had somebody go onto our site. Okay. So we sell books. We have these rings, um, fierce rings. They're silicone rings. They're amazing. They're my favorite silicone rings. We actually mm-hmm. designed them. Check it out. Go to our shop, Fierce Marriage, shop.fiercemarriage.com. <laughs> Um, so we, some, and we sell these packages that you can get the rings and you can get these books and it's a big, you get a big uh, discount, it's a bundle (laughs) and somebody did, they do these chargebacks. Okay. So when you're an online shop, chargebacks are like the bane of your existence (laughs) because you not only, someone says that it's a fraudulent charge, which it's not, it's, it's often not, we're not out to cheat people. Right. (laughs) So they'll, they'll go, they'll call their bank and say, I don't recognize this charge. And then that bank will just flippantly say, okay, charge back. And they'll take the money out of our account and then they'll mm. tack on another $25 fee to it. And then we have to prove that we made this sale. I'll try to make this short. So of course my job is when these come through, I have to go and try to find like, okay, was this a fraudulent thing? Cause it's possible someone could have stolen a credit card and mm-hmm. lied and deceived that way. Or it's possible that it was a mistake or it's possible that somebody's just trying to pull a fast one. So anyway, I go on, I find this was a legitimate sale. This guy got on and bought two books, spent like a hundred dollars, bought books, bought rings, bought all these packages, and then went to his bank and said, that's a, that's an illegitimate charge. Here's the thing. If you wait 90 days after shipping the item, the, the post office gets rid of the archive of the shipping information. Mm. And so I had to go and pay to get the shipping information to prove that we shipped it. And so I got So I was irritated at this point because I had to pay like 10 bucks to get the shipping information to prove that we made the sale that we already made. Anyway. I get on this guy's, I look up his name. I look, look him up on Facebook. I see, and so I'm wondering, did he just not get the package? Did he just, you know, did, did I'm trying to give him the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, mail's been going everywhere It's lately. possible they didn't yeah. get the package, and he thought, you know what, I never got it. I didn't get the refund, so I'm going to go yeah. and do a chargeback. That I can understand. But no, I get on his social media profile. I see pictures of him and his wife wearing the rings, mm-hmm. posing in these pictures, and here's the kicker. He's a pastor. Uh-oh. He is a pastor. And then I got thought to myself, how does someone lie like this? Yeah. How does someone lie like Now, there's a chance that maybe his wife made the purchase and he didn't recognize it. So maybe we'll give him that benefit of the doubt. Guys, if you need something, just give us a <laughs> like, call. Yeah, like, just, let's talk about listen, it. <laughs> generosity is our policy. Yes. Right? So if you're in need, let us know. We'll do our best to help you out. The point is, I got to thinking, what would happen if, if Selena or, or I or Carrie, who works with us, we messaged his wife and said, did you know that this happened? <laughs> That, that this purchase, I was my, feeling my, vindictive. My. He's feeling <laughs> what would oats. happen if he, if, <laughs> if he was lying and his wife found out that he was lying? How would that affect their trust? Mm. And so all that to say, this is what brought up the topic <laughs> of lies and deception in marriage. I apologize for the rant. Hopefully that was at least a little bit entertaining. <laughs> We're going to get into what this actually, what are the implications of telling the truth or lying either passively or overtly in our marriage? And we're going to talk about that on the other side. I, you know, I just had to get that off my chest, <laughs> Selena. I'm really sorry. And he didn't even write the rundown for this. He was just I like, didn't. let's write about this. Here's the story. <laughs> and you know what? It's God will deal with that man's heart. And yes, we, we got to be honest. We do. We got to be honest. We do. Without honesty, we are dead in the water. Yes, yes. We got to be truthful, honest. We got to be truthful with God, first and foremost. We got to be truthful with one another and yeah. with our brothers and sisters in Christ. So... Before we get started, thank you listeners, raiders, reviewers, viewers on YouTube. Thank you for just subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, smash that button. Uh, Please leave a review on your podcast app of choice. That definitely helps us get the word out. It's kind of the currency of uh, how people hear about us and hear about the the Lord. (laughs) Just put that weight on there. (laughs) No, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say that. It's one of those pyramids. Like, (laughs) if you don't forward this video to a friend. Yeah, it's not. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> uh, but if you want to support this podcast or this video, if you want to support anything Fierce Marriage, uh, you can do that. We just ask that you pray about that and consider, uh, yeah, supporting partnering. us and partnering with FierceMarriage.com slash partner. There it is. There it is. There's perks and whatnot. Uh, so I wanted to share this thing. So I'm a, um, so some of you know who Jordan Peterson is, you know, he, he's not 
I, I don't think he's a believer. I think he's dabbled in. This is a, there's a couple of Peterson. Okay. Jordan so Peterson. Dr. He's, he's Jordan B. Yeah, Peterson. You're not familiar with him. He's, no. he's kind of all the rage in terms of like men on the internet right now. Okay. So, um, so I, 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 I read some of his stuff and I'm, you know, I'm not a raving fan, but I, I listen to what he says. Um, not religiously, but anyway, he's talking about of all things, how to maintain romance in your life. So he's kind of one of these, uh, he's like an online mentor for <laughs> aimless men, I'll okay. say. And he gives them meaning and purpose in putting their hands to the plow of just being responsible young men, doing hard things because of the responsibility that you're meant to live with. Anyway, he starts, he says, how to maintain romance in your life. There will come a time in your life when you have done something you should not have done or, or you failed to do something that you should have done. Excuse me. Uh, you may need advice. You may need support. And he goes on. Life is too difficult to negotiate alone. If you tell your partner the truth or your spouse, you strive and you strive to act so that you can tell the truth about how you act, then you have someone to rely on when the seas become high and your ship threatens to flounder. This can literally be a matter of life and death. And this is what struck me about what he said, because this is kind of along lines of what we've said in terms of life and death, I mean, in the power of the tongue and what scripture says. Mm. He says, in a relationship where romance remains intact, truth must be king. Mm. So this is where I kind of think like he's dabbling in like the Judeo-Christian worldview, because who do we know is the truth? In the life. You just can't get away from it. In the way. Jesus, the, Jesus yes. is the way, the truth. He always. In fact, truth happens to be king. Yes. <laughs> His name is Jesus. It's amazing that's, how it always comes back to and that. And that's true in your marriage. Yeah. When we talk about lies and deception, truth must be king. And not just the idea of truth, but truth himself. Yes. Amen. Jesus must be king. So Amen. that's what we're talking about today. Uh, last week, we talked about three lies about isolation. Uh, definitely go and check that out. We're kind of talking about lies and deception. We're on this theme of discussing that in marriage because, like you said, truth needs to reign. When lies and deception begin to muddy the waters, your foundation starts to get cracked. Uh, it's one of the most devastating, I think, potentials in marriage if it's not dealt with uh, immediately. So we are going to talk about a few different things. We're going to define a few things. What is, is there a difference between lying and deceiving someone? Because there's a hot debate about that. Uh, biblical examples of lying and also instruction for the believers. What does the Bible say about lying? We're going to go through uh, three different questions that will help us navigate uh, lying in our marriage. Hmm. Hopefully we don't have to navigate it too much, right? <laughs> But anyways, uh, so there's a, it's a hot debate, and we're just going to go through this quickly. But I looked up what's the difference between lying and deception, yeah. and is there an actual difference? And a lot of philosophers they don't. What do see you say? A big what difference. Does I I say, say that <laughs> I say that lying is more of a verbal way. I think of of being deceptive. I think deception has to do with action, and will, so like I will I will work to deceive you. Um, but my words will be lying to you. I don't know. There may, again, there may not be a difference there, but I think they're one in the, they have the same motive. We'll just put it that way. They're in the same boat. So there's the lies <laughs> of commission where you're committing the actual lie. You're, you're, you're overtly lying about something. Yes. Selena says, did you, you know, did you take out the trash? Yes, I did. <laughs> As it's sitting in the, in the trash can, I haven't taken it. Today. I, I've, I've lied about it. <laughs> Or, but not really, right? Or it's, you know, the fact that she asked me to take out the trash, and this would be a lie of omission. She asked me to take out the trash. I said I would, and then I just didn't, and I didn't tell her about it. But I always know. <laughs> well, because it's right just there in the kidding. middle of the kitchen. <laughs> so let, let's talk about some examples. And so I, I just want to ba- root this in reality. Mm-hmm. How do, in, in our experience, yeah. how do couples sometimes lie to one another? I think the biggest prevalent lie nowadays is has to do with sexual integrity mm-hmm. um, among men and women. So uh, uh, if a husband and if you struggle with pornography, you're not alone. I, I'm here to tell you that that struggle is real, but you can find freedom from it. Yeah. I'm a testimony to that. And many other men are testimonies to that. There's freedom from uh, pornography. But when you're living in that bondage, lying becomes the norm. Mm. And you, you often Lying first to yourself, right? Yes, yes. And then lying to others. Yeah, because you can convince yourself that it's, you know, it's not really a problem. Right? Right. I just, I just, you know, I know it's wrong, but I, I, I didn't really, really mean anyone. to make a mistake. Yeah. It didn't really hurt anyone. If, if I don't, if I just convince myself that it's not a continuing problem, then I'd convince myself not to tell my wife. Right. And that's a lie of omission. Um, because you've you've sinned against your wife and you've not confessed it to her, so that's one way. And that and a lie of commission would be, if you know that I'm 
a husband struggling with, if you know your husband is struggling with it or your, your, your spouse and you ask him or her and she just says, no, I'm fine. Like that's mm, a lie. Yeah. You know? And addicts will face that in any addiction because yeah. the, the addictive personality kind of can lend itself to that. Another way would be, you know, rampant spending, mm-hmm. uh, you know, maybe a opening or, credit cards without your spouse knowing. Yeah. Racking them up, paying the minimum. Like. That's one of the big reasons that we advocate, you know, as strongly as we can uh, for couples to merge bank accounts. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I don't we think, too struggle with this early on in our marriage. Um, yeah. Which we will talk about that. Yeah. Uh, in the second part of this, um, this, I don't know, yeah. this video. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, financial decisions that yeah. I know that are against kind of the, the family policies, right? Mm-hmm. Our budget, they go against our budget. They damage us. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, and I'll justify it in my head and I won't right. s- s- speak the truth about and it. And one that we were kind of um, butting heads about because I felt, I felt like it was a very pointed question. Uh, he was saying that when uh, in communication with your spouse and how you can lie to one another, uh, hey, babe, you okay? How you doing? I'm fine. Like, <laughs> clearly, I'm fine. <laughs> And what, I think what and rubbed you wrong is I was like, actually, you just lied because you're not fine. Because first of all, if you're not fine, you're not fine with your spouse. And then they call <laughs> you out on something that just multiplies the frustration, I think, because you're like, I'm already angry with you. So now you're telling me I'm wrong, which is really hard to And hear you're telling anyways. me that I'm a liar now. And you're calling me a liar. So, which is technically true. So it use is. tact. Yes. But our, I think what that draws out is this fact that words have meaning. Yes. And we oftentimes mean something other than the words we communicate. And yeah. If we go so far as to think through that, we kind of have to call it what it is. Yes, I think and that you're saying something that is not that's patently false. And you're I, saying you're fine when you're not fine. Maybe you don't know how to articulate. It's true, and feeling. I think the call for that would be, and even in any sort of situation where you feel like you're starting to justify the lie in your head, is to pump the brakes, like stop and slow mm-hmm. down, slow down. Okay, in my head, in my heart, in my feelings, I know I'm not fine. A lot of times, I feel like I've gotten better at saying I'm not okay right now. I just don't know why yet. Like maybe you can see why. I'm not okay, but I'm still trying to sort through a lot. This is what's happened in the day or this is what's happened last week. So I don't know what's going on, but I'm, I'm not fully okay. I'm about 60%. (laughs) And that, you know, as we're talking through that now, that sounds like, oh yeah, well, that sounds kind of weird to have to articulate it that way. It's easier to said than done. Right. When you're, when you are emotionally in a hard spot to be able to have the wherewithal to put yeah. Words I guess, to what and you're we just, saying, I just want to give people those tools of saying, yeah, yeah. I'm not okay, but I, I will be, but I also don't know why yet. So I want, I'm going to, we're going to figure it out together. So, so maybe there's categories of, and maybe that's what we're getting at here is that as you talk about lies and deception, there's mm-hmm. categories of lies that are pretty obvious, mm-hmm. right? I've sinned against you and I'm lying about that sin, whether I'm either overtly or covertly lying to yeah. you. Then there's some lies that are more subtle, which to me, that was the lies of isolation. Mm-hmm. And that has to do with lies that we believe implicitly. Mm -hmm. Um, And so think in those categories as we go through kind of what the Bible says about lying Mm -hmm. over the next piece here is what lies do you feel like are more or less prevalent in your in your marriage, whether those are obvious lies or lies that you maybe didn't realize were there Mm -hmm. and, and you're operating off of. So interesting research here on lying and deception in the Bible. We go to Genesis three. The first sin came through a lie. Uh, the enemy came to Eve and fed her a lie. Yeah. Uh, lying is one of the first ten, com- one of the ten commandments. I believe it's number nine in Exodus twenty sixteen. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Uh, deception we see with Ananias and Sapphira in Acts five. Mm. Uh, what happened to them? That did not end well. Did not end well. Mm. Uh, Colossians three nine tells us to not lie to each other since you have taken off your old self with its practices. So we see lying being a part of the old self that is not redeemed in Christ. Uh, and so it's a call to putting on the new self of living in honesty in the light. Uh, in First Timothy, lying's listed as something uh, practiced by lawless people. Um, wow. Furthermore, liars will be among those judged in the end. We see this in Revelations 21.8. Uh, in contrast, God never lies. I feel like this is obvious, but reading it, I was like, yes, thank you, God. Like, he just does so. Not lie. There is no deception. There's no in him. deception in him. He is truth. Like you said at the beginning, yeah. he is the source of truth. Uh, Titus 1 2 reminds us that he doesn't lie. And Numbers 23 19, it is impossible for God to lie. Uh, that is in there. And then, like you said, John 14 6, Jesus called himself the yeah. way, the truth, and the life. So. He expects those who follow him to be people of truth. That is the mark of a believer. The truth expressed in love, offering hope to those that are seeking redemption from the lies of this world. One of those verses stuck out to me. Um, I mean, all of them 
amazing research cell, but in the first Timothy passage in first Timothy one, oh, nine yeah. through 11, that's law, uh, lawless people practice lying. Mm-hmm. And what that to me draws out is this idea that lying, it, 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 it's, it's, it's as if you remove yourself from the reality of there is an objective truth an yeah. objective, right and objective wrong. Right. And you, you act as if you're outside of that. Mm-hmm. You're lawless. Yeah. And so you can convince yourself because you're not submitted to the the capital T truth that mm-hmm. is Christ, that is God, who is the one who is without deception, right. without falseness. And 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 you are not operating under the fear of the Lord, mm-hmm. under the, that dread that Isaiah talks about. Mm-hmm. He's the dreadworthy God. Right. And saying, I must submit myself to his law or I'm in big trouble. And so just the rebellion that's involved yeah. in lighting, in lying, excuse me. That's that's what jumps out at me is the rebellion and refusal to to subscribe to God's version of reality. Well, and with that, oh, the disobedience there, we also have to understand the obedience part of it because there is, remember, our God is a God of order. He's a God of um, hmm. not chaos, not lawlessness, right? He, he, There's boundaries set in place, not, again, for our restriction, right? The enemy said, oh, you think God doesn't, he doesn't want you to know the difference he wants he does if you'll be like him if you do this when ironically they were as much like him as they ever would have been right so when we understand this obedience of it's not just obedience and i gotta grit and get through it sometimes it is but there's a promise with that there's a hope the Hmm. we're trusting the order that god made uh for us to be living in the light loving in a certain order being truthful, right, and being upfront about these things, there, there's a, there's an order to this. It's not, it's not yeah. just arbitrary. Which is what strikes me about you get a guy like Jordan Peterson yeah. who will, he himself said that he lives as if God exists, though he's not convinced that God does exist, right? Um, he says it can literally, literally be a matter of life and death, honesty, mm-hmm. because he's saying that there is an underlying yeah. structural morality that is hard, that's baked into the fabric of re, of, of reality. Imagine that. Right. And he, and he dances around it and he knows, but he's just, he's struggling with it. He says, in a relationship where romance remains intact, truth must be king. He's, he's saying that. Yeah. And so that's, to me, that's what strikes me about this idea of lying and deception is, is that when we go off the rails of truth, mm. we can't be surprised when the intimacy that we experience with our spouse yeah. begins to suffer. Right. We must stay on Right. The, 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 stay on the path. Right, and do what way. it takes to get back to that if we have fallen off those, right? Yeah, so, which is why we have these questions. Yeah, so love. we're going to yeah. go through three questions, um, and then after these three questions, we are going to have some content for our online course that yeah. will be what? So if you're not aware, we have an online learning platform called Gospel-Centered Marriage, mm-hmm. and you can imagine what that's all about. It's about building a gospel-centered marriage. <laughs> and uh, we're going to begin um, having parts of these episodes that are more kind of application heavy mm-hmm. are going to be kind of within gospel centered marriage and yep. that'll be, um, but little. we'll still make this time valuable. So don't absolutely, worry. Absolutely. Um, absolutely. So, so what's the first question? Answering these questions. So just to get you thinking, the first one is what do you do when your spouse lies to you or when they deceive you? Uh, mm. The second question, kind of two parts, can you build, rebuild trust? We get this a lot. Can you rebuild trust after lies and deception? If so, how do you rebuild trust and when do you start that process? We're going to address that. Uh, and then what does the Bible actually say about forgiveness? This is huge. I feel like this is a whole yeah. podcast on its own. Uh, but we're going to just talk through those briefly so we can kind of get your foot on the right path if you have yeah. uh, experienced lies and deception in your marriage. So what do you do when you find out your spouse has lied to you? I guess the first question is to ask how. And I think how breaks out into three different ways. So just stick with me. How did you find out that your spouse was lying? Uh, either they came to you or you discovered it. I'm pretty sure those are kind of the only two ways. Yeah. Or someone else came to you and told. So sure. That would be discovered in a different right. way. Right. <laughs> uh, and the way that you, how you came about the sin or the lie often exposes the attitude of the heart of the, the offender. Yeah. Um, how are they responding to being exposed, right? Is, it, is there a repentance there or is there a blaming game or are they shifting the blame or are they not taking ownership? Yeah. Again, a revealing the attitude of the heart, the either the desire to get back on the rails of truth, to live in obedience, hmm. or the desire to not. So that's interesting because, okay, I want to make sure that I'm tracking with you. The first question is what do you do when you realize you've been lied to? Mm-hmm. And so... In that, to answer that, you say, then you have to assess how did you realize you were lied to? Mm-hmm. And so if I lie to you and I come to you and say, Selena, I lied to you. Will you please forgive me? That's going to be a completely different heart right. response from you right. or, or it's, that's heart indication from me to you. Yeah. 
than if you catch me in a lie mm-hmm. and you have to come to me and confront me about that lie. Right. And that's what you're saying. Okay. And then based on that, then you have this other, okay, now how are they responding to this lie being exposed? Now, if I'm going to you and saying, right. I've lied, please forgive me. Well, I'm responding with a repentant heart. And right. that is now an open door for forgiveness and reconciliation. To begin, yeah. But if I'm, but if you come and catch me in a lie and mm-hmm. I say, well, no, what are you talking about? And I start, I start gaslighting you mm-hmm. and saying, you're crazy. I would never do that. Right. That I'm unrepentant. Right. And now I'm making you quite, and that's manipulation. That's a whole different topic. But <laughs> Yes. Yeah, so you're either unrepentant, you know, it's really hard to find reconciliation if a spouse is not wanting to repent, not wanting to take ownership. Uh, I would encourage the Christian mm. uh, spouse that's dealing with that offender to pray for their heart, uh, the heart of their spouse, to soften for the Lord, mm. to get a hold of them. Uh, pray for your marriage covenant. Seek wise counsel with your pastor. Uh, don't, don't fight that battle alone um again if the and then if they are repentant like you're talking about praise god like again i think the path is somewhat similar in that get wise counsel get help go to your pastor they should know what's going on um, because it's it's really challenging to deal with lies and deception uh, without an objective third party because you guys are so ingrained and hurt and there's a lot going on so people who love god people who love you uh, that know you get those people involved so that we call those marriage advocates. Yeah. Uh, but get them involved. And I think it, you really have to uh, take the degree of the offense um, in, in, into yes, account. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. With the degree of counsel that you get, yeah. right? If there is an affair that you need a lot, that's about as devastating as you can get. Yeah. If it's a, if, you know, all, sin is sin, but the deceptions the don't have the same consequences. Yes. Now, on the note of repentance, there is a, a thing, there is such a thing as rote repentance, right? Where, it's it, some. I see this a lot with men who know that pornography is a sin, and they know that they're sinning, but they don't have the will to actually turn from it. And so they'll admit, "Yeah, you know, I struggled, and you know, I made a mistake, and I'm sorry, and I'm going to repent to my wife." But there's no turning from it. There's a rejection of it verbally, but there's not a rejection of it in action. Behaviorally, yeah. And so, men, women, if you're in sin and you find yourself reciting kind of rote, repentant phrases, saying. You know, I, I please forgive me, but there's no turning from it. Then, mm-hmm. um, that's an indication that there's something in you that's deceived still. Mm-hmm. Look at John first. Excuse me. Look at First John one, and look if we if our, with our attitudes, if we yeah. say that we are without sin, then we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Mm. And but if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we will be cleansed from our unrighteousness. Right. We will have fellowship. That's walking in the light, and so. It's not just lip service. There's got to be something in us that's that wants to reject that that physically, it almost I will say almost physically just finds it disgusting and wants to reject that lie well, that sin. And part of that rejecting, I think, there's also a replacement, right, of the virtue sure. of what you're. So I'm I'm I dealt. I'm dealing with pornography. I'm dealing with desires for, you know, sex and all of that. So how can we divert? Not divert, but repent. Okay, God, these desires are wrong in this context. How can I then uh, replace them with the virtue of sex within my covenant, uh, with loving my spouse the way and pursuing them in the true and pure way? Again, that order, right? Sex is in an order. Mm. It is under the covenant of marriage. Yeah. And so, again, turning, re- repenting, rejecting, and then replacing. That's good. Fight the lie with the truth. Yeah. And there's, uh, and you know, well said. Well said. Okay, so the last part I think to this que- this first question is how does the Bible instruct you as the offended to respond? And again, uh, you have to take into consideration yeah. what the deception or the lie was. But ultimately, we are called as believers to forgive. Uh, yeah. Defining forgiveness, it's been kind of one of those terms that's uh, it's changed a lot. People are thinking yeah. like it's freedom for myself from him and all his sin. But really, uh, forgiveness is. It's not a free pass. It's not this instant trust of forgetting what, and forgetting what happened. But forgiveness is um, acknowledging the sin. And when Jesus says in Matthew eighteen twenty one, he says you got to forgive seventy seven times seven, right? That because we have been forgiven mm. of so much, uh, we can then forgive. But again, forgiving is not uh, <clears throat> saying it's okay. It is a say, yeah. It's it's an acknowledgement of saying, okay, God, we recognize that this is sin. And you've forgiven me. You've forgiven us of this. Um, yeah. How can we move forward? And so we're going to talk about more about what the Bible says about forgiveness later on. But one of the things that comes to mind there is forgiveness 
of one another is, I think, more a function of our response to God than it is a response to, to one another, which Absolutely. we'll talk about that more uh, in just a few minutes. I did want to ask one hard question, and this might rub people a little bit the wrong way, but I'm going to Go put it, it out there before your feathers get ruff, ruffled. Be just, fierce. just listen. <laughs> um, in this, when you're when you're seeking forgiveness, or your spouse is seeking forgiveness from you, okay? Let's say Ryan is seeking forgiveness from me. It's usually how it is. Not kidding. Um, <laughs> I think I need to ask myself this question. Um, did I play a part in this? Is there something that I need to own up to? Um, again, it's not taking on the blame for your spouse's sin. Uh, it's not saying that I'm the cause of it, but it hmm. really is going to the Lord and asking the Holy Spirit, Lord, is there something that that my own heart and sin that I've been dealing with convict me and lead me in truth and light, God. Yeah. Help me to know and own and again, turn, replace, live in the light because I know that there's freedom for our covenant and our marriage. Yeah. Again, it's not an excuse. It's just a, let's yeah. ask this hard question because if we really want to grow, then we don't have to be afraid of these hard questions. Yeah, and what we don't want you to hear is that if a husband's struggling with sexual temptation, it's his wife's fault because right. That's not what we're saying. she's not giving him everything that he demands from her. That's not what we're saying. Mm -hmm. But if you take both of you as individuals and look at your lives as people living in light of a holy God. Mm -hmm. I think that's what you're saying is we can yeah. just be help, like ask in a healthy way, not how can I be manipulated by my spouse sort yeah. of way. How has my but sin how, maybe contributed to this situation? Because right. we don't ever stand from a place of self-righteousness. And that's that's the key yeah. with seeing ourselves in light of Christ first and then loving out of that yeah. forgiveness is that I'm not forgiving you because I'm righteous. I'm forgiving you because I'm forgiven. Right, so good. And that we're gonna talk about that in a few minutes. Okay, so the next big question. So the first one, just as a recap, was what do you do when you find out that your spouse has lied to you? Mm -hmm. Okay, the next big question is, can you rebuild trust? Mm -hmm. Okay, so lies come out, whether you've confessed it to me or I've discovered it. Mm -hmm. um, the question is, can we rebuild trust? Mm -hmm. And the short answer is yeah. yeah. Is yeah, you can. We've seen it. Uh, we know scripturally that reconciliation is is good and right and true and possible through the power of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. and And trust building is part of full reconciliation yep. now trust you can be reconciled but still be Not building trust, trust. Each other. yes <laughs> it um, takes two to rebuild that trust you yeah. both have to be willing to be involved <clears throat> in that uh and then i guess the question starts when do we begin to rebuild trust right you've had this bomb kind of go off or some sort of brokenness in your trust has happened mm -hmm. and i would say as soon as possible as soon as you can start rebuilding trust Again, get a knowledgeable, experienced believer, a pastor, a guide couple, a counselor, mm. uh, depending on kind of the level of the lie and the deception. Get them on board. Sit humbly beneath them. Uh, get their leading. Get their encouragement. Um, just get your foot on the right path and know that you can rebuild trust. Do it as soon as possible um, and yeah. start in small ways. And so much of rebuilding trust is having the same foundation. And so mm. that's where we would mm -hmm. say to you, if your marriage is not centered on the gospel, then that's always going to be a problem. You're never going to feel like you're completely on the same page because you're living off. T you're living from two different playbooks. Right, right. And you need to both come to Christ and come to grips with the reality that you are sinners saved by grace, and He mm -hmm. is perfect, and He is calling you into His mission. Mm -hmm. Not your. He's not just a back pocket savior, but mm -hmm. He's somebody who's calling you into His All agenda. Of you, yes. All of you. Then you'll be able to, I think, begin rebuilding true trust that is mm -hmm. lasting because you're now looking at the same sheet music you're now right. playing off the same sheet music so um and that's not to make it sound too trivial um and the we're Bible's not, not sheet music but absolutely and we're going to talk about this last question briefly but i think we're going to save more of it for the gospel centered marriage uh, course so you'll have to check that out but uh this quick part about what does the bible actually say about forgiveness we kind of touched on what on defining mm -hmm. forgiveness uh but the relationship relationship between vertical forgiveness so god forgiveness between of me uh, and with god uh and the horizontal forgiveness of forgiveness with each other those are those are actually linked the bible does tell us that like our intimacy with god and day-to-day -day cleansing are dependent on our forgiveness of others we see this in matthew 6 12 mm. uh we're supposed to forgive as god has forgiven us like i can't hold something against him because god has not held my sin against me we see this in ephesians 4 32 colossians 3 13 so we need to make an effort um, to understand God's forgiveness of us. If you find it hard to forgive your spouse, yeah. uh, go read some of the Old Testament <laughs> and how God has yeah. forgiven us uh, 
us sinners, you know, I'm, and again, I'm not trying to say that you're, you're right. He's wrong. You're better. He's not right. We're just saying that we are all sinners saved by grace. Uh, forgiveness yeah. was purchased through the blood of Christ. We have forgiveness. So what does that look like? Yeah. That, and that strikes me because, you know, you read the words of Christ and one of, I would say probably the primary theme of Christ's teaching is always going to be one of repent and mm-hmm. turn and mm-hmm. believe. And so it's always this writing of wrong relationships, mm-hmm. setting right wrong yeah. relationships, the, the wrong relationship between you and God, the fact that you've sinned against God, repent, turn from your sin, right. believe Christ being the one that is making that union with, with God once again possible through mm-hmm. his propitiation on the cross. And, and uh, but also now, Write the relationships between you and others, Mm -hmm. people that you've sinned against. Confess your sin Mm -hmm. to one another. Let that be the marker of us Mm -hmm. as believers, that we we recognize and we confess our sin to one another. We choose to reject the lies that I need to somehow posture in front of you because I stand before a God who sees me fully and completely and without without any... uh, He he has no illusions about who I am, and yet he still says that, I'm going to call you righteous. I'm going to call mm-hmm. you my own. Mm-hmm. And so that that has to be the foundation of, a forgi- of our forgiveness Absolutely. for one another. And it has to be our foundation for our stopping of lying and deception. Mm-hmm. That we can live in the light with one another so that we can, again, be cleansed from that unrighteousness. Mm-hmm. Now, this doesn't matter if we don't want to be more like Christ. It doesn't matter if we don't care what God thinks. Yeah. And so I guess that's how we're going to end this episode. And we're going to go into... Um, the more application stuff, share some of our stories. Um, if you sign up for gospelcenteredmarriage.com, you can get access to this course when it comes out um, through there. We're going to share that that piece. But that's how we're going to end this this part of it is we want to call you. If, if you, couple, you're watching this, you're listening to this, and you're mm-hmm. thinking, I want that type of relationship. I want that type of transparency with my spouse. I want that type of closeness with my spouse. And more than that, I want it with God. Yeah. I want to know God, and I want to, I want to be known by Him. Mm-hmm. Well, we're here to tell you that He does know you that he knew you when he died on the cross. It says, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Christ died for sinners. He didn't die for people who were perfect. And so we want to invite you into relationship with Christ. If you don't know who he is, uh, you can go to, we set up this website for you. It's Mm thenewsisgood.com. It's going to walk you through what it means to place your faith in Christ. And it's going to give you some steps to go forward in that, to find a pastor, to walk alongside you as you become a disciple of Christ. And we're, we're here to tell you that Jesus is the one reason that we're still married. He's the one reason I'm still alive. Mm-hmm. Literally, it's a miracle of Christ that I am alive here today. And I could, if you read some of our stuff, you'll get to know what that story is. But the point is, is that he's inviting you into new life. Mm-hmm. He's inviting you into forgiveness. He's inviting you into walking in truth through the way that is Jesus Christ mm-hmm. himself. So go to thenewsisgood.com. Check that out. Send that to a friend. If you know who Jesus is, but you know somebody who doesn't, share that with a friend. Mm-hmm. Share the gospel with your friends. You guys, Jesus is life. We're here to spend mm-hmm. our lives telling you that Jesus is life. So let's pray. Um, is that good? Did mm-hmm. I miss anything? All right. Jesus, um, thank you. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for forgiving us. Thank you for being the truth so that we might walk in you, that we might mm-hmm. walk in truth. Jesus, I thank you for uh, the forgiveness you've given us on the cross. Lord, cleanse us from our sin mm-hmm. that we might walk in fellowship with you and fellowship with one another. We pray for the husbands listening to this, watching this, Lord, I pray that they would be cleansed of their sin, not just so they can call themselves good, but so they can know you. They can know the one who is good and they can Mm -hmm. walk in light of all you've called them to be. I pray Mm -hmm. for the wives who might be struggling with sin or struggling with unforgiveness or struggling Mm -hmm. in whatever way that they would know you more clearly, more truthfully, that they might walk in your light, walk in the truth. They might know what it means to be loved by you and to love another in light of how they're loved by you. Lord, um, it's only by your grace that we speak here today that we were able to share this good news. We thank you for it. We pray that it would hit our hearts with its full weight and effect in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, like I said, if you want to um, continue on, we're going to do the part that goes just to gospelcenteredmarriage.com. Um, that will release in the coming weeks. Uh, there will be a connection guide associated with that. We're going to do that periodically throughout the life of the podcast to help add value to you and to give you a way to go deeper in the stuff that we're teaching on here. Mm-hmm. But we're going to dive into some of our own stories, yeah. some of our own stories of maybe deception in our marriage. I've never deceived you. Never. Never. 
It's Never ever. Right there. It's a lie right there. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> um, good when you go into some of our stories, some of the, the things that we've experienced as a couple who's had to walk through some of these hard yeah. paths, and we're going to tell you there's hope on that side of it. So if you want to be part of that, check out gospelcenteredmarriage.com. Sign up for a monthly uh, subscription there, and you'll get full access to that. Uh, but as for this part of the episode, it this episode is. You can. <laughs> we'll see you again in about seven days. So until next time. Stay fierce.